Hi everybody, how you doing? This is Brad Dyke reaching out to you. Today I have a little oddity. Uh, sometimes you guys hear me talk about the automotive industry. You know, they have IT in those environments. Very, very, very caustic environments. Very durability is what you need when it comes to working with um, the nature of the automotive industry. But one of the devices that we're talking about here is known as the Snap-on versus uh, M4 series unit. Here is what that unit looks like. In its handheld format, and I've already opened this one up and prepared it for repairs, uh, it's basically very rubberized on each side. It's designed to take a beating. It's touch screen. Its back panel is just as, as durable. It's all rubberized. What you would expect in, an, in a, almost like a combat situation. And in this environment, what you're looking at here is the face sectional of the snap-on unit being taken apart by me. I'm not going to go over that process. It's not difficult. Uh, it's pretty easy to work with. Okay, and this is the underside of the unit. And what we have here is basically a very classic example of a severely damaged mobile unit. Now, this unit is basically set up on a series of support points, as you can see here. And the support points, if you look at them, have a brass fitter for a screw fitting so that it can basically function. But the flaw of the snap-on design, and I've noticed this in, in the even newer models, is that they're using these plastic fitting towers for the ability to mount and secure the units. Now, the thing about these mounting securing towers here is that they're made out of a baseline plastic, not, not a sophisticated flexible plastic, but a rigid plastic, a urethane style plastic. And the thing that happens with that is if you notice here with this one you see the brass ring in it but if you look here it snapped completely off it's sitting right here and look at all the little pieces you see here they come from these units now I'm gonna secure this guy and I'm gonna secure him via by using a specialized glue believe it or not it's great it's called shoe glue it's a flexible mod plastic glue that really turns around and just shapes itself very similar but with a flexible nature as this plastic you see here. Now what I need to have here is I have what is commonly referred to as a q-tip but I cut this end off so I can take a very small amount of glue and start building out a point of support glue support for this but you have to be very careful when you do this because if you look here I put glue on the plastic seams that support the brass fittings right there and right there and so on and as you look the brass is in the clear now I'm going to do something very similar to this I'm going to go after all this support plastic and I'm going to rebuild a plastic framing that will hold that brass head just stand by for a second okay so I've begun the process of building this one out it's heavily damaged so it's going to take a couple of shots before I can get it to work again here you can see that I've already done this and completed that work and this one has already been resecured. I'll put additional reinforcement of the glue in there to build up that plastic so it's much more durable. Again I did it here and again I really had to work here to get this one to work right and so on and so on. I even had another one snap off here. Now the problem that happened to this snap on unit is it was impacted on this corner because the shearing effect comes from here and so these units bam 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 began to shear off now there's a real serious problem with this because when you look at the actual logic board this is the logic board it's actually backwards let me flip it around here for you when you look at the logic board and it sits like this it is also very fragile it's not designed to take an impact like this and one of the key details in that as I have discovered, is the fact that the motherboard RAM is very prone to damage. Now, why is it prone to damage? Well, that's easy. Because these brass fitters were floating around inside this chassis, making contact with that logic board. So I have already gone in, and I've suspected RAM issues that were damaged via by a, basically what I call a, electrical shortage 
caused on the motherboard, there's a very good chance that this logic board is gone. Uh, so this is a very far-reaching attempt to try to revive this logic board, which basically, to you and me, it's just a laptop motherboard. There's the processor. There's the video chipset. And, you know, it's basically a no-nonsense Windows XP diagnostic baseline uh, OEM installation configuration. So with that being said, you have to remember that overall, that when you're working with all of this, the sense of fragile nature of these devices, even though they're built to be really durable, and you can look at the corners to see where the impacts have happened, and you can see the, the nature of the shearing. The shearing is on the back side, which meant that it was pushed like that, and that reached across the actual logic board itself, and RAM is not forgiving. I know people say, hey, you know, it's not the old days of anti-static. It has nothing to do with static. It has to do with G-Force. These are not very nice and very responsive when they get put under G-Force. That's why laptops have a lot of problems sometimes, because people drop them. So with that being said, overall, this is a good little motherboard setup. And if you can salvage the unit... And in this case, you know, we're looking at a M4 series. Uh, and it comes with its secondary I.O. adapter interface, which is basically this guy right here, who talks to the nature of the Snap-on series meter, the M4 series. And it is, if recoverable, worthwhile. So that's the bottom line when it comes to this particular device. So I'm going to have to let this work for a few days. It's going to have to dry and so on and so on. But I will do what I can to bring this unit back online. A lot of the people ask the question, are these worth it? This unit, when it was sold, no longer supported by Snap-on today, uh, was around somewhere between $5,500 and $7,500, depending on the software you had installed on it. It was a state-of-the-art at the time that was purchased because it had SSD drives back in the day when most machines didn't have SSD drives. And it is basically an XP machine, fully functional, fully compliant to all the diagnostic tools that were put on board via by Snap-on. So if you can keep, keep them running, great. Uh, hopefully Snap-on will maybe give you an offer to take one of these back for a greatly reduced price on a newer unit that's more modern. But uh, really, you know, if it works and it's not broken, don't fix it, right? Well, with that being said, um, automotive industry is a really great testing ground for a lot of things that, which I work with. And I genuinely have to say that uh, garages, the service you know, facilities, uh, dealerships, those environments are very caustic. Uh, this hardware, when I opened it up, did not have the aluminum calcite style accumulation that happens with airborne aluminum or steel or irons or basically very very tiny little dust particles that accumulate because of the machining and actions that are going on things become airborne and when they become airborne and they turn into dust they actually carry metal in them and they get into their computer systems their alignment systems their diagnostic stations like this and if they're not built well it will destroy the machine. I know this because one of my own friends who has his own business constantly has to have my, my sons come in and clean his systems because they just build up with so much soot and so much garage dust that it's not friendly. It's airborne grease. That's what grabs the metal. It holds the metal. It gets other things. It makes it even more airborne. And they use air compressors, so that's air circulation. And the next thing you know, Half of the computer systems are filled full of dust and other systems that are fairly robust like the Snap-on M4 unit, um, they handle themselves pretty well. But genuinely, they don't do well when you drop them. So when you see this kind of damage or you suspect the memory module, which is where I would go first, if the unit boots up with a blank screen, but the screen lights up, it's not devoid, it's just lit, but nothing's happening. Then at that point stage, take a look at this as a potential problem, repair the damage, put in a two gig module replacement, 
boot the unit up and see what you get. You might be able to recover the unit, you might not. Just depends on how hard it hit the ground. Well, that's it for me. God bless. Have a great time and please enjoy yourself as you learn new things. Bye-bye.